<laughs> oh, sh Hi friends, welcome to this week's class of Dead Funny University. I am your host and your fellow student, Kelsey, and this week we are talking about Harley Quinn. To help us learn, as always, well, not necessarily as always, but so far, no, no. this is who we got. Chris is our, our Professor Emeritus. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing, doing, I'm doing better than the ratings of Birds of Prey, that's for sure. Yeah, I've I've seen there some really complimentary things, and I've seen some really non-complimentary things. Yeah, uh, obliterated. <laughs> Can you say that word a couple more times? Obliterated. <laughs> Try to do it like fucking. Thank you. Uh, uh, what you call it? Uh, Mortal Kombat with like finish him. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Totally a thing I know something about. Yeah, that's true. I figured maybe, just maybe, but no, no. Oh well. Is I what discovered it is. video games with Mass Effect in like 2011. <sighs> You're the worst sometimes. Every now and then. Damn. I have to give you a reason to hate me. Mm. I think we could it, it organically run into those if we really. Oh, tried. really? You think <laughs> so, Chris? <laughs> I don't think you had to try too hard. <laughs> you might be a dick. Do you have any questions <laughs> that you would like to give me about Harley Quinn? <laughs> oh, yes. Why, yes. Dead Funny yes, University, the only place you can call your professor a dick and have no consequences. There you go. Woot. Um, <clears throat> so, got a couple questions here. Unfortunately, something happened and it cut off my last two, but those will wait till those will get all the way at the end. We ain't got to worry about those guys. So that, that's question nine and ten. Who fucking cares? Anyways, so <clears throat> question number one: What is Harley Quinn's real name? Mona Lisa. Not even close. What is her profession before she became Harley Quinn? What was her profession? Acrobat. Nope. What is her nickname for the Joker? Babe? Nope. What are Harley Quinn's most iconic two colors? White and red? Mm, you got half blue? No. Like red and blue, but <clears throat> she wears a lot of white to accent those, so. Ladies and gentlemen, this is someone who clearly Black. has only seen the newer stuff. There Black? you go. There you <laughs> go. God damn. I had to think Ooh. back to those Nickelodeon cartoons I didn't get to Ooh. watch. What is Harley Quinn's favorite weapon? This would also be in those cartoons that you didn't get to watch. Um, a juggling... No. Whatchamajigger? No. All right, I don't know. I don't think that's a real thing, but no. No, it's the things that you juggle. I'm sure they have a name. I just don't know what they are. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. The other thing was not real. But that's what I got. You got one. Barely. I, yeah, next I, to that one. I, I fell into one of those we questions. might need to put a couple asterisks <laughs> next to that one might need to put a couple all Good right Lord. so give me baseline harley quinn knowledge what if i haven't seen the movie yet which i haven't what should i know about this character when i see her in media so baseline harley quinn knowledge so harley quinn started actually this is kind of cool um, not a lot of characters start this way. Harley Quinn didn't actually start out in the comics. She was actually in that Batman cartoon you were talking about, and she was only supposed to be like a one episode, one and done stand in character. Oh, yeah. interesting. But they thought that the person, um, they thought that she just did such a good job of bringing this character to life that they wanted to write her into more stuff. So she actually ended up coming to the comics a lo long time later. But she was um, <clears throat> in the in that cartoon. The guy that created her, I can't for the life of me remember his name, actually based her off of a friend. And this friend was a actress in the show Days of Our Lives. <clears throat> Ooh. And there was this one episode where that specific character, it's like a dream episode, where that character was dressed as a clown. And she had clown face paint and everything else on. And her exact, like, character is who he based Harley off of. And that's who they got to come voice her in the actual Oh, cartoon. that's cool. Right? 
What a great way to like grab your source material and just shove it in. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah pretty much, pretty much. So Harley Quinn was um, she was a therapist before she became Harley Quinn. Yes. That I didn't expect. It's how she ended up coming into contact with the Joker to begin with. She ends up falling in love with the Joker. Was she a therapist to the Joker? Yes. She got assigned to the Joker. So there's two different there's two different main ways that Harley Quinn's story was started, which is that she ends up falling in love with the Joker, and then that's how she turns into her life a crime, because he ends up sweet talking her into busting them both out. And then the other one is is that she was a um wasn't a therapist but she basically wanted to be able to understand the more insane criminal minds so that way they could help fix them she wasn't necessarily a therapist i forgot what they called her so she actually ended up dressing up as an inmate and going into arkham asylum where the world's craziest fucking villains are literally craziest and um when she actually walked up to the Joker, he saw her, didn't say anything, and just kissed her. And then after that, they found out what she was doing and wasn't okay with her methods and fired her on the spot. At which she came back and busted everybody out. So, uh. yeah. So there's that. Um, her real name is Harleen Francis Quinzel. So she was Dr. Harleen Francis Quinzel. And. I'm, I'm- yeah, Francis is the, Harleen is hideous. Francis is terrible. All all of those mm. names are bad. All yes. of them are bad. That is pretty fair. lady. Terrible name. That is fair. Um, but uh, yeah. So that's what she did before she became, you know, with the Joker and stuff like that. Um, one of the cool parts is is that how a lot of people see her with the uh, pale face, like the Joker has. Mm-hmm. That's because the Joker wanted her to be just like him, so he pushed her in the same vat of acid that he originally fell into in order for mm-hmm. her skin to get bleached white like that. Yep. <clears throat> not okay! It is a very twisted relationship between the two of them. Super not okay! If not okay. Not do love, not do this. If they're not in love one second, they're trying to kill each other the next, so... Yeah, very, uh, very weird relationship between the two of them. Um, her favorite nickname for him is Mr. J. She also likes to call him Puddin' a lot. So, there's that as well. But normally when she's talking to Batman, <coughs> which she likes to call B-Man, normally when she's talking to Batman, she refers to Joker as Mr. J. <coughs> um... Yeah, she was originally created with the iconic um, Jester onesie that was half red, half black. And then later on, we've gotten the more new modern Harley Quinn, which, um, well, what's her face? Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is kind of based off of uh, a little bit more of the modern look, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the cartoons and in the older comics, she always ran around with a gigantic mallet. That was kind of like her. Yeah, that was kind of like okay. her little her little uh, weapon of choice, if you will, which was pretty cool. And out of most of the characters, because you normally bring this one up, she I think is the first character here on Dead Funny that we're going to talk about that has actually um, had love interest in multiple genders okay yep. so are we she... talking do we know like bisexual pansexual like what how so they've never come out and specifically said anything but the actual there is an actual series out there which technically i guess you could consider non-canon due to the fact that they deleted the entire 52 universe or 51 universes into the new 52 but there was a stint where she was in a lesbian relationship with poison ivy <clears throat> All right. Boy, wow. Who is also her best friend. <clears throat> okay. So she is female. Mm-hmm. And she is either bi, pan, sexual. Mm-hmm. And that is how she identifies 
in okay cool yep. that's what i needed to know thank yep. you i'm she, so excited that we finally have one that is not finally. just hetero that's great yep she had a long stint and actually they there was another stint or maybe it was the same stint where they were actually uh in a girl band together as well as dating so oh hell yes that? yeah that's cool yep so good old little miss harley quinn and poison ivy which is pretty pretty interesting um yeah, and then I got to say my favorite pieces of work from Harley will definitely be, and this is going to definitely come from the gaming side because I didn't read a lot of DC comics growing up, and what I did, I was very selective to what I read um, due to the fact that a lot of DC comics bored me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, mean, that's, I don't want to watch the Avengers, I'm sorry, the Justice League fight the Justice League for the fucking umpteenth time because someone decided they were going to go rogue. Anyways, so that being said um harley my favorite harley would definitely i I like the original look of harley the most for sure her jester onesie i think is is very classic and iconic and that's the my favorite version of harley um Mm -hmm. not as big of a fan as the new modern harley that we have now but um harley in arkham asylum and um Arkham City, I think, was a very good portrayal of the character. Um, just the way that she acted, her motivations throughout the entire game really stuck very well with how she was in the comics, which sometimes that can get kind of messy because game developers want to kind of go their own way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then those of you who don't know, the Arkham series is a three-game series, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight uh that did so well that they're actually in the talks of doing a full movie trilogy based on those three video games oh neat yes it's probably one of my favorite batman stories ever told um but yeah harley did a really good job i believe she was only in the first two um she might have been in the third one i don't know it's been a while since i played the third one i'm actually going back through those actually right now as we speak i just finished the first one i'm on the second one um but yeah she did uh, they did a really good job with harley they did a really good job with joker as well which was awesome uh they got you know our good old boy mark hamill to voice the joker who is always really done, yeah he's always been the joker in like all the cartoons and in the video games he's just a perfect mm-hmm. joker voice like he's he's got that shit down <clears throat> and i believe he's the third amazing. game was the last one where he actually voiced the joker ever like for good he's done with the joker which is pretty sweet so kind of like retire it on a really good series like that is a uh, pretty perfect in my opinion and that also <clears throat> gives whoever as they continue because like batman's not going anywhere and mm. the joker's not going anywhere either and so yeah. it gives somebody else a chance to step into those shoes and potentially do it well right. before he dies and it's like well nobody will ever do it well like he has the opportunity to pass the baton off intentionally this way right for sure. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, no, it's a great Joker. Absolutely love him. He's great. Um, but um, his and Harley Quinn's relationship is actually done very well without it being too much. Because I think a lot of people forget like how dark and sadistic the DC comics actually are. And like mm-hmm. how abusive Joker actually is to Harley. Because that is their relationship. Um, so without it being too dark, I mean, he's definitely more vocally demanding and stuff of Harley. Um, it definitely puts her down a lot, but you know, like the actual physical violence isn't there. Like it is in the comics and everything else. So yeah, they I are, mean, that's yeah. probably good. Yeah. I mean, it's the, when, when the characters were made, I mean, Joker, I mean, dude, psychotic. I mean, that's just all there is to it. And she yeah. feeds directly into that also being psychotic and in a interesting way with her background knows how to push joker's buttons and kind of seems like she gets enjoyment out of not only pushing joker's buttons but pushing it to a point where there is punishment and i feels that she, her character draws enjoyment from being able to make that up <clears throat> which is an interesting character dynamic because of how much they stay together. And then even in the new 52 universe, the way that she talks about the Joker 
is actually interesting because it's kind of like they're no longer like she doesn't understand who the Joker is anymore. So he's even gone past a level that she comprehends as far as like how crazy he actually is. Um, hmm. I know in the uh, comic book series, which is is for sure my favorite co- Batman comic book series with the Joker. It's not my favorite Batman comic book series, but it's 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 definitely probably number two. Um, the death of the family. The Joker actually uh, breaks out of prison and um, or out of Arkham Asylum, and he gets his face cut off completely and nails Ooh. it and nails it to Batman's door to let him know, like, I know your secret identity. I know who you are. Not only do I know you, I know who the entire Bat family is. So Robin, Nightwing, Red Hood, Batgirl, everybody. And then he ends up going and breaking his or breaking in and stealing his face back and then staples it back on and then has like a belt and shit to just like tie it around in order to keep it on. And yeah, he and then he goes back and like recreates all of Batman's and his first encounters in order to lead Batman to him again, which ends up leading him down to the Batcave. And Joker knows where the fucking Batcave is. Like, it's crazy. It's a fucking crazy comic book series. It's pretty fucking good. Um, crazy might not be an appropriate word. We might want to go for revolting. Jesus hell. Yeah. And uh, that's the one where Harley's like, I don't even know him anymore, B-Man. He's not my same Mr. J. Uh... Yeah, this guy's on a different level. One yeah. that you don't follow. Well, one the that even you better part tranquilize. Is, is that he actually kind of professes about like how basically him and Batman are in love, and how like it's kind of like the whole good versus evil thing where one can't exist without the other. He's like, what is a king without his jester? And stuff so like that. And so it's his. It's, we're two yeah. sides of the same coin. Mm-hmm. It's. It's, mm-hmm. I love the existence of you not, he's not in love with Batman or vice versa. Well, he, he does talk I, about it as a romantic relationship. I make you necessary. But yes, he does. And you make me necessary. Correct. And. Correct. Yeesh. All right. So this dude is full on bonkers. <clears throat> Great. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But just because I did touch on it, and in case anybody else out there is uh, kind of interested, there is a Batman series called Year One. And it's whenever Batman gets put in like a coma, he wakes up, everything's gone to fucking hell, and he's just had it. And he ends up getting into a fight with Scarecrow, and he captures him, and Scarecrow's like, so what are you going to do, Bats? You're just going to call the cops, they're going to show up, they're going to slam handcuffs on me, put me in jail, and I'll be back out within a couple months doing it all over again. And Batman just smirks, and he's like, you're right. That is exactly what's going to happen. So I have to make sure you learn your lesson. I have to make sure you understand that there are consequences for your actions. And breaks every fucking bone in Scarecrow's body from the fucking fingers down to the toes. And then uses rope to awkwardly hold him in a weird position so that way his bones start to grow back wrong and then waits like a fucking day or some shit and then calls the cops to go pick him up yeah yeah it was pretty fucking insane i was like god damn that (laughs) is very dark Mm -hmm. god yeah Oh, yeah. So I need to interject here. Um, I read a lot of books. That's one of the things that I love reading. and I love fantasy worlds in particular. And I remember (coughs) when I finally got sick of like YA novels, because in YA novels, the worst thing that could possibly happen to you is death. The best thing that can happen is the boy that you like kisses you, but the worst thing that can happen to you is death. And I think one of the, like, the more adult themes that you see in adult fantasy literature and adult literature in general is the realization that Death is bad. Death is bad. Death is not the worst thing that can happen to you. Having to live like with, you know, extreme physical deformity, extreme mental challenges and like scars and PTSD and having to try to carry on a normal life when you no longer can for any one of a dozen reasons. And either your mistakes got you there or somebody else's mistakes got you there and you can never hold them accountable for those mistakes. Mm -hmm. That is a way harder reality. And it sounds like, like DC grabbed that and then just drank it with a whole bunch of caffeine and meth and lost their fucking minds. Holy crap. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, like I said, get 
really surprised and it's actually funny i remember showing a friend um the animated movie uh because as much as dc's movies actually fucking blow ass uh their animated movies are really fucking good and um they had the killing joke and um i was watching that one and the person i was watching it with was like i didn't know that the comics made joker so like dark and sadistic because the movie is based off of one of the comics Mm -hmm. based off the the comic book series the killing joke and um there's this scene and it's whenever batwoman actually gets paralyzed is is this comic book series where the joker finds out who she is shows up to her apartment and for those of you who don't know who batwoman is that's commissioner gordon's daughter and uh shoots her in the stomach and it severs her spine forever leaving her paralyzed then later on we see that they're at a carnival and it's the joker batman and commissioner gordon and commissioner gordon has been locked and chained to a swan boat and he's sending uh commissioner gordon down the tunnel of love and the commissioner gordon looks up and we're like they're supposed to be doing like the kiss cams and all these hearts throughout the tunnel it's nothing but blown up pictures of barbara gordon laying there bleeding out butt naked so he stripped her down nude and there's just all these pictures of her just nude, just bleeding out all over the place. And Commissioner Gordon's eyes are like stapled open. So he physically can't even close his eyes. And he just has to sit there and just stare at his daughter. That is truly horrifying. Yeah. That's an animated movie. You should go watch it. It's good. It's on Amazon. It's great. For those of you who have Amazon, you should go watch it. It's great. I'm not doing that. People I'd like to watch something shit, happy. Man. People forget that. Like one of the ones that blow On people's purpose. minds. One of the ones that blow people's minds is actually the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Their comics are fucking dark. Like dark. Like the death of Donatello is dark, man. Like people need to read into that shit. That uh yeah, that's something right there. Whew. The world is dark enough, I do not need to go <sighs> jump into the DC universe. Fuck that noise. Fair this may enough. be the last DC character we talk about, everybody. I am not <laughs> loving this. I don't know. We might have to do one on the Joker. Uh, no. <laughs> Please, no. There's nothing that would prompt that coming up anytime soon. I don't know. They make a Joker, too. Walking Phoenix no. did win an award. Please he did win an that. award. I don't need to hear any more horrifying stories about this dude. Good oh, lord. Yeah, the Joker's the darkest of them all, that's for sure. I don't think there's a single character in Marvel Comics that comes close to holding that torch. I mean, some of the stuff you told me about Thanos was, like, was objectively bad, but it was not this dark. No. Well, and that's something that's really been always interesting to me, as far as, like, with Batman the Joker concerned, is, like, here you have two people who literally are nothing. Like, they, they're physically nothing in the universe that they belong to, respectively. Batman mm-hmm. is just a human. Joker yeah. is just a human. They don't have superpowers. But they are arguably the fucking staples of that universe. And like I just said, there's not a single character that even comes close to holding a candle to the Joker. So, like, psychologically. And that's crazy to think of, you know, because we have people like Carnage. We have people like Deadpool who are just that psychotic. But to go as far through the extents that Joker has, you know, it's just completely different and then you Mm -hmm. we have our tony stark we have our mark specters but once again batman being the detective he is going through the shit that he goes through on a fucking nightly basis like it's pretty fucking insane to not have any powers yeah it just makes you respect those two characters a little bit more like they've done well with what they've had to work with as far as Mm -hmm. the people who have written these stories knowing these characters don't have superpowers finding other ways to make these characters so entertainable or entertaining sorry so entertaining without oh i'm just gonna be able to fly out and fucking blow up a planet if i want to type deal yeah it's (sighs) it's a reflection of the like the depth and breadth of humanity not necessarily the depth and breadth of imagination Mm -hmm. if that makes sense yep Absolutely. Which I think is actually more terrifying, to be honest. Right. Well, that's the shit that gets me is whenever you actually like fucking uh, like comics or like video games. Actually, uh, Far Cry 5, was it? I want to say it's Far Cry 5, whatever one where you're in Montana. 
that game was actually more creepy to me with the fact that that could actually happen. And for those of you who don't know what that is, a quick little rundown. It's literally a redneck inbred family that has enough friends with guns and trucks that they basically sanction off their entire county of Montana and cut all communications and run the entire fucking county. And you're a cop that's stuck in the middle of it trying to work your way out. And like Less they have all the these people stuff. brainwashed, like completely brainwashed. Like they have their own churches that are built in their fucking monuments and shit. Like it's nuts. And it's like that shit could well, I mean, realistically probably not, but that, no, realistically, that yes, and similar <laughs> things have happened in various places. In the na- major one I'm thinking of is Oregon, actually. But this kind of stuff, what exactly what you're describing, both kind of has happened in some places and could happen at any point in time. It's crazy. It, it's it's fucking crazy. Like that shit to me is just fucking nuts. Knowing that that could just bam. Ah, oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Can we go back to Harley Quinn, please? We can. We can. I just wanted to freak you out before you go to bed tonight. Yeah, good. Thanks. Screw you, Chris. (laughs) Scott's going to come home and I'm going to be like, I need a cuddle. And he's going to be like, why? Because I did DF you with Chris and he's a dick. Scott's going to text you later and be like, you did this. I'm mad at you. I'm going to love you, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. That's fucking funny. Oh, man. Yeah, Harley Quinn. So what else do you have to tell me about Harley Quinn, like base baseline Harley Quinn knowledge? That's that's pretty much about it. I mean, that's your base okay. Harley Quinn. It just, once again, with DC, it's always different because you've got all these different universes that got slammed into one. So there's thousands of different Harley Quinns that have made all their fucking own whatever. But as yeah. far as like an original origin story, I feel like we covered the base kind of Harley both of Quinn. them. Yeah. Okay. So I got a bunch of questions for you. Okay. Now, her horrible, hideous, awful name, Harleen Francis Quinzel. Mm -hmm. Is that the only, that and Harley Quinn are the only names that she goes by, correct? Correct. I mean, does she have any nicknames? Like nicknames like HQ or, you know, fucking Harley, you know, one name without the other, but that's her main name that I know of. And she is human. We have no reason to believe she's anything else. Correct. She has no superpowers. No superpowers, and she's in the DC universe. Yep. Okay. Her, what are her major, after everything she's been through, what are her major motivations? What drives her? Uh, Mr. J's love. Anything that could possibly foil any plans of the Batman to stop him from doing anything, literally anything. Um, there have been moments where, like, you know, the Joker isn't around and harley quinn has tried to become like you know kind of a uh it's always who who can run gotham i mean that's that's the constant struggle of batman series is like who can run gotham it's never like okay cool the joker's behind bars it's time to go to sleep no now the joker's behind bars everybody knows about it now two Face is stepping up now the penguin's stepping up now harley quinn stepping up in joker's absence like it's always who can run gotham and she's mm-hmm. tried her fair share at running gotham a couple times as well so. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you've mentioned that she's been separated from Mr. J more than once because jail, whatever. Mm-hmm. In that time, we know at least once she turned to Poison Ivy for to be in a band and have fun. Mm-hmm. But other than that, does she like? Do, does she and the Joker ever? Ugh, I hate this concept of work it out in this re- abusive situation. But does she ever have somebody that she kind of more or less ends up with? Or is it always kind of whoever's convenient at the time? She dated Deadshot for a little bit. Um, and that was actually supposed to be reflected on screen when they did the Suicide Squad movie, but they didn't really do that. So, um, which would have been Will Smith's character. Uh, but. <clears throat> Not really, and even like as of right now, she's just kind of like, like Joker has done a very good job of putting fear into literally everybody. So, so nobody will lay a hand on her, start a, a relationship because Joker will kill right, him. There's a lot of times where like you'll be playing as Batman in the game series I was talking about, 
and you'll hear thugs talking about, oh, did you see Harley's ass? And they're like, yeah, but I'm not touching that thing. They're like, why not? I totally would sleep with Harley. And it's like, it has nothing to do with it. I would or wouldn't. It has to do with the fact that her psycho boyfriend will fucking murder me if I fucking get anywhere close to her. So, like, yeah, they're they're terrified of Joker and his wrath that he would bring down if, you know, someone decided they were going to take Harley. Dude, he's willing to <coughs> staple his own face back on. Like, I'm yeah. afraid of the Joker. Like, <laughs> the idea of touching something he likes does not sound good to me. Right. Um, now, I know, I know Batman is one of her major enemies. Does mm-hmm. she have any others? Hmm. I mean, pretty much almost every villain in Gotham, honestly, if you think about it. I mean, because they all want the fall of Joker, so that way they can rise. So she's not. She's any cross them um i guess you could say anybody in the bat family would be an enemy um cat woman would be an enemy you know anybody who was gonna get in her way but it doesn't sound like she has any of her own as an individual it no. sounds like it's all a reflection of her relationship right. with the joker because even when she's like making a, a run to run gotham it's because mm-hmm. mr j's in jail so she's using his gang using his people, his money to try and run Gotham while he's in jail so that way she can then break him out and he can take his throne back. So she really doesn't have an identity separate from being his plaything. And that's what they've kind of tried to do with the new 52 is to kind of give her her own identity, which is why they're kind of separated type deal where Joker's kind of went off the deep end and Harley is just kind of somewhat staying away from that. Um, okay, but, so they recognize they have a character that they haven't done much with as an individual, and they're trying to give it a right. chance. And she's had okay. some solo series, but it's never been anything that's been considered canon and actually really worth reading into, if that makes sense. Unless you're an actual yeah. like, Harley Quinn fan, which I would not mm-hmm. consider myself that. So, And comics cost money, people. So <laughs> there's that. Now, does she have any notable weaknesses beyond being a human being? Um, I mean, personally, and this is, I'm only going to point this out because Batman said it in the game just recently when I was playing it, but she's really stupid, even though she's a therapist. Oh. Like so she's... Batman, Batman always goes to her to get information on Mr. J's whereabouts because he knows that she's going to fucking say something or fuck something up on accident. She's just that much of a ditz. So, so her she... character, God, her character is a trope. Yeah, her character is a pretty little sex toy that has no brain in her head. I mean, she does some crazy I mean, shit are... whenever he's locked up. So I, I don't really know where to go with that. I just, you also got to remember Batman to be called stupid by Batman. I mean, we're talking about the smartest man in fucking DC universe. I mean, well, yeah, but is she, is she portrayed as intelligent at any point in time? Like, is that a, a key part of her character <coughs> or is the fact that she's gullible and before crazy. Before she becomes Harley Quinn? Yes. Afterwards when her psyche is broken and she's just like the fucking Joker? Probably not. She's very ditzy, very airheaded. Man. Not a huge fan of that as you may guess. Yeah. yeah she's... Do we know who actually created her? I mean, I don't does it... know his name. Okay. And once again, she was originally created just to be there, basically. Just, yeah, just to be there. And then they tried to grab that character and make her more, and sounds like they didn't really do that. So her personality is not terribly smart, Mm. hella crazy and unpredictable, and a bit sadistic and masochistic. Is there anything else? Yeah, I mean, just as you can kind of see with what the new Harley Quinn is for those of you who went out and saw Birds of Prey or watched Suicide Squad and wondering, you know, it kind of sounds like different than the Harley that you're seeing. Once again, the new 52 is something different. I haven't read that much about it, but they are trying to give her her own personality. But I feel with the way that Harley has been praised in the comics for so long, there's a reason why those movies are doing as terrible as they are. Because they're taking that character and they're just going too far with it? Is that your opinion? I don't necessarily think they're going too far with it. I think it's more along the lines of DC is already hurting. I think it's very, I mean, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I've already said this once on this channel and I honestly don't really care whether you agree with me or not. But the best thing to come out of DC so far has been Wonder Woman. And that's it. 
There's not a single DC movie that has literally made me go, I'm glad I paid them money to see that early. <laughs> There's not one. <laughs> Justice League was trash. Batman vs. Superman, trash. Every Superman, trash. Every Batman, trash. Wonder Woman, the first one, fucking amazing. I'm actually excited for the second Wonder Woman. Because that's how good of a character fucking Wonder Woman and Gal Gadot were in that oh, fucking movie. God. Easily. She's amazing. And whenever you have a franchise that is struggling and grasping at everything they possibly can, going and picking a villain, a sidekick villain to a main villain and trying to do your own story around her is not going to help. That's just not, she's not going to be your champion. She's not. You need to pick someone who has a compelling story that is their own story, not just a fucking copy of Jokers. And or fuck, look at the Joker movie. I finally sat down and watched that one for the first time because I physically won't pay to go see DC movies unless Wonder Woman's in the goddamn title. And that movie was good. I don't think it was amazing, but it was. I definitely agree with the fact that he won a fucking Oscar for it. 100%. He did a great job playing fucking um, Arthur. Great job playing the Joker. <clears throat> and like I, I, I've read so many fucking facts on him afterwards and i thought one of the ones that was really interesting was he talks about like how he studied schizophrenic laughs to try to get it down perfect to make his laugh like on fucking point oh that's joke. terrifying right and i mean like i said he literally made me feel for the joker it was pretty fucking insane <clears throat> so something like that where you can have that but the issue with that movie is is that they don't plan on that being part of the fucking universe because they want yeah. it to be separate because the universe is basically non-existent because everything they really sucks so that's not going to go anywhere they totally set it up to where it could but it's not going to they've already it's said not it's going. not going to they're like we want this to be simply what it is and leave it the fuck alone we don't want the DC EU to taint what we've done here with Walking Phoenix. So, okay. So, outside of crazy, does Harley Quinn have any other quirks? Not really. I mean, that's pretty okay. much all she's got. Like I said, she's she's a little bad shit. So, I and... would say I would say she probably becomes more independent whenever Joker is is locked up. I mean, she 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 definitely doesn't act as as stupid and ditzy whenever he's not around whenever he's around she is definitely like his stepping stool if you will hey that's where she's with at. sadistic people stupid and and pretty is an effective way of not being hit yeah fair enough yeah fair now enough. is she alive or dead currently in the alive. in media alive she's currently alive okay yep Currently alive. Yeah. So I finally figured out I needed to start asking that because there's enough people that uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that have died. Now, I'm leaving this one for last on purpose. Outside of the Joker and apparently Poison Ivy, who else is her squad? Who who are her squad? What are they? How are they made up? Tell me about them. So, I mean, I guess you kind of have the Birds of Prey, which are more along the lines of just like women mercenaries and women who have been wronged by society da, 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 type deal of coming together and making this one badass group other than that I mean her real friends have only ever really been Joker if you can consider it and uh, I don't Poison Ivy and they even kind of like made a nod to that in the video games too which I actually liked a lot because like in the first one in Arkham Asylum you end up running into Poison Ivy as Batman and she's like in a cell with all these fucking toxins around her to keep her from being able to like talk with the plants and break out and shit like that and hardly walks past and she's got the key card to let prisoners out because her and Joker are taking over Arkham Asylum and you're trying to take it back and she walks past her and she's like but don't you remember me Harley and stuff like that and then she's like oh, okay I guess I'll let you out even though you're not on the J or even though you're not on Jay's Mr. Jay's list and then mm -hmm. she fucking swipes the key card and then walks away. And then that's whenever her fucking Poison Ivy starts wreaking havoc over fucking Arkham Asylum as well. And you gotta take her out. Yeah. Hmm. The interesting part in that game series, and for anybody who's wanting to play it and you're fucking worried about spoilers, but sorry, the fucking series has been out for a long time now. Um, the interesting part of that is in the second game, whenever the Joker actually does die and passes away. 
how she takes it, which is why I can't remember if she's in the third one or not. I'm pretty sure she's in the third one, but I'm not 100% sure on that because the interesting thing to that or that to me, and I'm pretty sure it's the third one, or maybe he dies halfway through the second game. I can't remember, but either way, one of the games after whenever he dies, what was always cool to me is like you would be Batman and like you would like grappling up to like a roof or something, right? And you'd be looking out over Gotham City trying to, like, you know, see if you could see any crime or waiting for your next mission to pop up, whatever. And then all of a sudden you would start hearing the Joker and you turn around and he would be on the rooftop with you. So he was, like, actually making Batman go crazy. And when you were having conversations with the Joker's ghost, which was pretty fucking insane. Yeah. That had to be creepy. It was very well done. Very well done. I cannot say enough good things about those games. (laughs) like it's been a while since i've played a fucking superhero game and was like wow this is fucking awesome and uh, do i love every fucking game out of that series if they make that into a movie i'll fucking buy tickets midnight release for dc again that's for sure because i will be going to go see that unless they let me down with the first one then i'm like well fuck this Uh, that's it i'm done i tried i tried like guys i still haven't even seen aquaman all right and i can watch it for free I can literally watch it for free. Like, that's how much DC has hurt me. I, I physically just can't even bring myself <sighs> to watch it anymore. I just can't. I can't. I will never see Birds of Prey. It will never happen. Just like I'm never see whatever new Suicide Squad movie they're doing will never happen. The only thing that made me really want to see Joker was the fact that I saw a goddamn YouTube clip and Robert De Niro was in there. And I was like, I like Robert De Niro. I actually like Walking Phoenix. Let me watch this clip. And I watched the clip and I was like, okay, you know what? I'll watch the movie. Fucking, it was a good $3. It was a good $3 that I spent to rent it for the night. And then that was it. But Birds of Prey, I'll never see it. I'll never see it. Aquaman, probably never going to see it. Still haven't seen it. Wonder Woman 2, I'll be there. I'll watch that. We can do that. Justice League 2, eh. Miss me with that shit. Eh. <laughs> eh. Definitely won't see that new Suicide Squad they're making, though. Nope, that one can pass right the fuck on by. I will not be putting my money onto that one. Nope. They cannot. I like how their 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 plan to be better is to just throw as many... A-list actors as they possibly can into one movie and see what happens. There's like fucking 50 people in that movie. It's like, no, I'm good. I'm no, I'm all right. They're hoping it'll do the same thing that it did with you and uh, and the other one, where it's like, oh, I like Robert De Niro. Okay, well, these these this many good people can't, in theory, make a bad movie, right? <sighs> Not sure. <sighs> Some people can act their way through anything, but. It's still going to be a bad movie. Joaquin Phoenix is that fucking guy, apparently. <laughs> He's that fucking guy. Ugh. All right, Chris. I think unless there's anything else you want to tell me about Harley Quinn, I think I'm ready for <coughs> my final five questions. Or actually all of them at this point. Okay. Number one. What is mm-hmm. Harley Quinn's real name? Harleen Francis Quinzel. Mm-hmm. Terrible name. What is her profession? Or what was her therapist? What is her nickname for the Joker? Mr. J or Puddin? Puddin. I love hearing her do the Puddin. It's so great. What are Harley's most iconic two uh, colors? Jesus. Red and black. Shit. What is Harley's favorite weapon? Mallet. There you go. Giant mallet. Which I'm still whack people with. Why is Harley's face? Hell, just like the Joker's. Because the freaking Joker pushed her in a vat of acid. Oh my God. What was Harley's first appearance? Not when. What? Uh, the Batman cartoon. Yeah, the original one. Yeah. 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 Who is Harley's best friend? Poison Ivy. Boom. Got it. You passed. Boom, guys. This is why we do this. this is why we do this. <laughs> You learned a whole bunch of information on a movie that maybe you'll have the unfortunate. I can't unfortunate even finish what to see? I, I can't even finish that. That's how disappointed I am with DC right now. I can't even finish making fun oh, of them. Oh, man. They're just not even worth it. I can't even finish making fun of them. I can't. I just can't, Kelsey. I just can't. 
This is their fault, not mine. Oh, you you're so this, hurt. You did this. <laughs> was it was it actually Batman vs Superman? I want to say it was Batman vs Superman. Was the movie where I finally said enough is enough. I know I for a fact I did not watch Justice League in theaters. I waited till that came out and I rented it. I still so, haven't yeah. seen it, and I don't know that I'm going to. Well, I'll tell you what, Kelsey. If you ever want to see Batman smile and jump up and down and clap his hands, there you go. Yeah, I know, right? Batman smiling, jumping up and down and clapping his hands. Yeah. At Superman showing up, nonetheless. Not his parents coming back to life magically, but at Superman showing up. Sounds like a terrible movie. Oh, it's great. I mean, you got to see that beautiful Ben Affleck smile. Although, I should say... If they make a Flashpoint Paradox movie, I will definitely go watch that. I don't even care who the cast is. It could literally be everybody that's been cast so far. I will go watch that. Flashpoint Paradox is easily one of the best things that ever happened to fucking DC Comics. Holy fuck. Like, the Joker in that one is Batman's mom. It's an alternate universe where instead of the parents dying in the alley... Bruce Wayne dies in the alley and his dad becomes Batman and his mom becomes so stricken with grief, grief she becomes crazy and becomes the Joker. That I would go see. Right? That right? sounds really interesting. That was the one time you ever saw Batman show emotion because at the end of the animated movie, the Flash comes back with a note from Batman's dad and Batman cries as he's reading it. <clears throat> what the hell did the note say? I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know. Go read the comic it, and find out, right? That or watch the animated movie. There's an animated movie out. So there's that oh, too. It's cool. fucking good. It's fucking good. I was like, holy shit, I am hooked already. Let's go. That sounds so much better. It started off so stupid too. It's like the Flash races Superman. Who's really the fastest? And the Flash runs so fast, he fucking literally just sprints into another fucking dimension. And I was like, okay. Okay, I'm on board now. Uh, yeah, I'm now paying I'm attention. Now. <laughs> Let's do this. Well, everybody, that's going to do it for our class on Harley Quinn. If you enjoyed this content, if you have any thoughts of your own, please like and subscribe and then throw your comments down there so we can interact with them. We'd love to hear what you have to say, especially if you have any thoughts on uh, what DFUs we should do next. Mm -hmm. But please come and interact with us in the comments below or on the Twitter or Twitch links. We have those mm -hmm. down there as well, and we'd love to chat with you if you're available. And you can always follow us on Twitter if that's your kind of thing. It's not mine. But it might be yours. So <laughs> hopefully we will see you on one of those places. And at the end of the day, we will see you at next week's class, which you'll find out what it is when it releases. Bye, okay. friends.